Okay, so 12.5, equations of lines and planes. Today we'll talk about lines, and probably tomorrow we'll get to planes. We will be writing the equations of lines in three space. So to do that, two pieces of information that we need. We need a point, the point that's on the line, and we need the position. By position, you can also say the direction that the line is going. So let's say we draw some line in three space. Say that is our line L. Let's say that we also know that we have this point on the line. Let's call that point P naught. So that point will be X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Okay, so in our figure, we know that P naught is a point on the line. So that's the first thing we need. We also said that we needed the direction. For a line, the direction will be determined by a parallel vector. And we're going to call it V. So here's the idea. If you know this point P naught, Pick another point on the line. Let's call it P, which is X, Y, Z. So ultimately, we want to be able to find all the different P's, all the different points on the line. So if we were to draw vectors to these points, this vector A, then, would be the direction vector. It's more helpful, though, to have a vector that starts at the origin. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw in some parallel vector. So that vector v is parallel to a. So we have this vector tells us the direction of the line, and our point p naught tells us the position. So th these are the two things that are necessary to write the equation of a line. So let's say a, then, that a that I wrote in, that's a vector that starts at P naught and head towards P. If that's the case, then another way to write A is T multiplied by V. They're parallel, so they have the same direction. Their only difference is their magnitude. So that's what the T accounts for. So this leads us to the vector equation of a line. You will be learning three different forms of writing a line. First one is a vector. They're all related. Vector of equation of a line is going to be r equals r naught plus t times v. This is the r naught. So r naught is the vector that goes to the point that we know r is this vector right here. So when we plug in different values of, values of t, it's going to give us different points on the line. Plug in a value of t, and it's going to give you r, so it'll give you this vector, which will tell you a point that's on the line. If you plug in values where t is greater than 0, your point is going to be to the right of the initial point. If you plug in values of t that are negative, less than 0, you're going to get points to the left of the initial point. Make sense? Okay. Another way that you're going to see this written that vector r that gives us a point that's on the line, it could be expressed in bracket notation, x, y, z. r naught might be expressed as also vector notation or bracket notation. V might be expressed as ABC. So then instead of R, you're going to have XYZ equals 
x naught plus t times a, y naught add t times b, z naught add t multiplied by c. Okay, now how does that help us? That leads us to the next expression of a line, which is the parametric equation of a line. So the parametric equation for a line through some point x naught, y naught, z naught, so it's exactly what we had above, and parallel to a direction vector ABC, I guess parametric equations. It's going to be exactly what we wrote above. So it'll be x equals x naught plus t times a, y equals y naught add b times t, or t times b, and z equals z naught plus c times t. So those are the first two. I could ask you to write a vector equation. I could ask you to write parametric equations. Questions on our equations before we do an example? OK. So example one. Find a vector and parametric equations. for the line that passes through the point 4, 2 and is parallel to the vector v, which is negative 1, 5. So first we're going to start with that vector equation. The vector equation was r is equal to r naught add t times v. r again represents any point on the line, so that's going to stay. r naught is the vector that goes from the origin to the point that we know, so that'll be the vector for 2. plus t, v is any vector parallel to the line. So in this case, that vector that we got is negative 1, 5. I am perfectly OK if you leave the equation like that. You might see it, see it written like that. Sometimes you might see i and j notation. So 4i add 2j plus t times negative i plus 5j. That's another way you might seen it see it written. And then lastly, some people like to put together the i's and put together the j's. So some people are going to write it like this. 4i <coughs> and then negative i. So 4 minus ti plus 2 plus 5tj. So any of those are acceptable. And I believe WebAssign should allow you to put any of those in unless they specify otherwise. So that's your vector equation. We also need the parametric equations. So x is going to equal 4 minus t. y is going to be 2 plus 5t. And then those two obviously go together. So this is some of what your homework is going to be. So it looks long, but a question like this should be pretty quick. Two questions for you. My first question, if I asked you to find three points on the line, could you? Any three points on the line, what would you do? Yeah, plug in different values for t. So if you plug in 1, you get the point 3, 7. So that's one point on the line. Other thing I wanted to ask you, are these equations unique? So 
So is this the only set of parametric equations for this line? Is this the only vector equation? Let's think about the vector one. Is this the only vector equation for this line? No, why not? There's other parallel vectors, right? Couldn't I change the length of this vector and it's still parallel? Couldn't I choose a different point? Okay, so not unique, not unique. Okay, next example. We are going to find parametric equations of the line passing through point P1, which is 2, 4, negative 1, and point P2, which is 5, 0, 7. Okay, so we talked about earlier, we need a point and we need a parallel vector. We obviously have a point. There's two of them we have to choose from. How do we find the parallel vector to use for the equation of our line? Well, we used to find the vector from P1 to P2. Yeah, exactly. We're going to find the vector connecting these two points. So 5 minus 2 is going to give us 3. 0 subtract 4 is negative 4. 7 subtract negative 1 is 8. Now, one thing to note, this is one parallel vector. So any scalar multiple is going to work. So if you want to divide by a, a constant or multiply by a constant, it's still going to work. We need parametric equations. What point do you guys want to use, the first one or the second one? Second. second, great, we'll use that one. OK, so we get x equals 5 plus 3t y equals 0 minus 4t, z equals 7 plus 8t. So those are our parametric equations. Questions on parametric or vector equations before we move on to the third representation? Yes. Okay, last thing I want us to talk about with this problem before moving on is where does this line intersect the xy plane? So I'm looking specifically for a point, the point where this line will intersect the xy plane. Ideas. Z equals 0, right. xy plane will mean z equals 0. So we get 7 plus 8t equals 0. t then is negative 7 eighths. So you're going to plug negative 7 eighths into your parametric equations. Do you guys trust me if I just tell you what you get? OK, so the point ends up being 19 over 8, comma 7 over 2, comma 0. OK. Into these equations up here. Ready for the third representation of a line? OK, great. It's called symmetric equations. Have you guys learned symmetric equations for lines? No, that doesn't sound familiar. OK. OK, this is based off of the parametric form. So parametric form is x0 plus at y equals y naught plus bt, z equals z naught plus ct. For the symmetric equation, what you're going to do, or symmetric equations, you're going to solve each of these parametric equations for t. So the top one, t will be x minus x naught over a. For y, it'll be t equals y minus y naught over b. 
for z, it'll be t equals z minus z not over c. Okay, this then is the symmetric equation of a line. x minus x not over a equals y minus y not over b equals z minus z not over c. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea why you need to know three different equations for the same line, but you're going to be asked for all three. Not all three, but you need to know all three. So in your homework, you're going to be asked for specific um, forms of the line and on the test as well. Okay, next example. We are going to write symmetric equations. for the line from number two. So if you remember, our vector v that we found was <coughs> 3, negative 4, 8. Our initial point, we used 5, 0, 7. So our equations then are going to be x minus 5 over 3 equals y minus 0, so just y over negative 4, equals z minus 7 over negative 8. Okay, next thing we need to talk about when it comes to lines. Besides writing equations with lines, related very closely to that is line segments. So we are going to find parametric equations for the line segment joining P, which is 2, 4, negative 1, and Q, which is 5, 0, 7. Okay, so we're going to start by writing the equation of the line, and then we'll figure out how to make it a line segment. How do we need to start? Come on, guys. Find PQ. Okay, did you guys notice these are the exact same two points from before? So it's the same exact vector. I don't feel like we need to keep calculating vectors over and over again. Okay, I'm going to use this point instead this time. So we get x equals 2 plus 3t, y equals 4 plus 4t, oh, yes, thank you, and then positive 8, I think, okay, and then z equals negative 1 add 8t. Now, this right now represents an entire line, not just a segment from point to point. So how would we make it a segment? How would we get only part of a line rather than the whole line? Restriction on T. Okay. So now we got to figure out what we need to restrict T to. Any ideas? Sure. What is just a good guess for one value of t? Zero. Plug in zero, see what you get. If you plug in zero, you get two, four, negative one, which gives us that one right there. Any guesses for what to plug in for this? Four. One. Plug in one, you get that point. So t is going to be between zero and one. So if it's a segment, you have to make sure that you restrict t. It's always going to be between zero and one, just based on how we uh, formed this line. Okay, you might see another form though that I want you to see. Sometimes written like this. 
r of t equals 1 minus t times r naught plus t times r1. So this is another one that you can use. r naught is the vector from the origin to the first point. r1 is the vector from the origin to the second point. This is also written sometimes as r naught plus t times r1 minus r naught, which is exactly what we just did over there. Okay, we got one more equation of lines question and then we're gonna move on to planes. Does that work for you guys? Okay. So next example, consider the following lines. I wanna know, are the lines parallel? Or do they intersect? So here are your two lines. Line one, they're all going to be written parametrically. Line one is x equals 1 plus 4t, y equals 5 minus 4t, and z equals negative 1 plus 5t. So that's your first line. Second line, x equals 2 add 8t y equals 4 minus 3t, and z equals 5 plus t. Okay. So, let's start with figuring out if the lines are parallel. How would we know if the lines are parallel? zero vector. Okay, sure. We could look at the cross product. What else can we look at? Because I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of lazy and I don't really feel like doing the cross product. So try to find the most efficient way to do this. What two pieces of information do, does a line give us, the equation of a line? Point and direction. So if the vectors are parallel, what are we going to look at? Point or direction? Direction. direction. And what should be true of the direction? They have to be exactly the same? Scalar multiples of each other. Okay. So I'm going to start by rewriting line one. I'm going to write it in vector notation instead. So choose your point, 1, 5, negative 1, plus t times 4, negative 4, 5. This is just going to help me to identify the direction a little bit easier. So the point on the second line is 2, 4, 5. And then the direction is 8, negative 3, 1. So these then are our two direction vectors. Not the same, not scalar multiples. So that tells us that our lines are not parallel. Next question up is do they intersect? If they intersect, where do they intersect? Now, this one I think is the trickiest. Not to find it, but just to understand. Okay, do we recognize that these two t's are not the same t? That the lines may intersect, and if they do, it wouldn't necessarily be at the same value of t? Do you get what I'm saying? So t might be 1 in this case and 2 here, and that's when they intersect. So these t's we need to treat differently. So to figure out if they intersect, we're going to try to find their point of intersection. If we look at the x's, we get 1 plus 4t1 is equal to 2 plus 8t2. So this is line 1, line 2. And then for y, we have 5 minus 4t1 
equals 4 minus 3t2. And then z, negative 1 plus 5t1 equals 5 plus t2. So this is always line 1, line 2, line 1, line 2, line 1, line 2. Does this make sense why we have to use t1 and t2? OK. Sometimes you're going to have one that's easier than the rest of them. In this case, like one that's easier to solve for. I don't think there really is. So I started with the first equation, and I solved for t1. If you trust me, t1 ends up being 1 fourth plus 2 t2. Right, so this is a system. So then what we're going to do is we are going to plug this into the second equation. So we get 5 minus 4. Instead of t1, we're going to use 1 fourth plus 2 t2 equals 4 minus 3 t2. So this ends up being. 5 minus 1, subtract 8t2, equals 4 minus 3t2. That's 4, that's 4, they cancel out. You should end up seeing that t2 equals 0. OK, what do we do from here? Into all of them? Just one of them? Which one? Okay, so let's start, try that. Plug T2 into here. If we plug T2 in, that'll be zero, so we get T1 equals one fourth. Okay, did we need these two equations? Okay, well, let's try plugging these two into our two equations and see where they intersect, right? Because from what we've found, it looks like they intersect at the point where those, those two are true. With me? Okay, so we're going to plug 1 fourth into line 1. So this one right here. If we plug in 1 fourth there, we get 2. If we plug in 1 fourth there, we get 4. And here we get 1 fourth. Can you guys verify that I did that right? Okay, line 2, we're going to plug in 0 this time. We get 2, 4, 5. So do we need the third set of equations? Yes. So what you need to do is before you even get to the point of plugging in, you need to plug these two into the third equation and make sure that it's true. If I plug in 1 fourth here, like we did before, we get 1 fourth. If you plug in 0, you get 5. What does that tell us about our two lines? What? They do not intersect. How is that possible that they're not parallel and that they don't intersect? Throw back to geometry, guys. What do you call it if you have two lines in three space that do not intersect and are not parallel? <laughs> Starts with an S. It's a four letter word. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed for you all. Skew, yeah. Skew lines? Skew lines not parallel, don't intersect? Does that sound familiar at all? No. No? Oh, man. That's not, that's not good, guys. Can I go off on a tangent for a minute before we talk about planes? OK. Do we have any questions on lines before we go to my tangent and then back to plane? OK. What have you always been taught about parallel lines? Like in all of math from the time that you learned about parallel lines, what were you taught? Same slope. Same slope and? 
don't intersect. Ready? Not true. That's not true at all. Those of you who take math classes in college, uh, the kind of math world that you all live in is one math world. It's called normally Euclidean geometry. So it's like a normal piece of paper. Um, if you take a geometry class specifically in college, you're going to learn about there's two other different kind of geometric worlds. Hyperbolic. And I don't remember the other one. And in those worlds, parallel lines sometimes intersect. Doesn't that blow your mind? Can I myself draw it? No. There are, yeah, there are computer programs that can draw it. I certainly cannot, though. I felt like I was lied to, though, when I got to college and learned that. No? You don't feel like you were lied to? Yeah. Okay. Great, now we're talking about planes. Woo. Planes are not too bad. Maybe a, like a tiny bit more work sometimes, but not that bad. Okay, so unlike a line, a vector that is parallel to a plane is not enough information to determine that plane. So if I give you a point and I give you a vector parallel to a plane, that is not enough information to write the equation of a uh, unique plane. There are multiple planes that will be parallel to that vector and through that point. So instead, you need a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. So that's the biggest difference. You got to know with a line, it has to be parallel but the plane has to be perpendicular. So here's going to be our equation of the plane. You are going to take n, which is called the normal vector. That's a vector perpendicular to the plane. You are going to dot it with r, subtract r naught. So this is the normal vector r naught is a point on the plane. If that vector is normal to the plane and we dot these two, what should we get? Zero. Yeah, you're going to get zero. This is called the vector equation of a plane. Sometimes you'll be asked for the vector equation. Sometimes people are actually going to take the dot product of this. So that normal vector, let's say, is the vector ABC. Remember that R represents any point on the line, or a vector that goes to that point at least. So R is x, y, z. So this will be x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught. So if we multiply this out, it will lead us to A multiplied by x subtract x naught plus b times y minus y naught, plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. This is called the scalar equation of the plane. And then there's one other equation when all of this is multiplied out and you combine the like terms. Okay, ready to use this idea for an example. Yeah? Great. Thank you for answering and not just staring at me. This is example six. We are going to find an equation of the plane passing through the point 3, negative 1, 7 and perpendicular to vector n, which is 4, 2, negative 5. OK, so 
So like before, this is not going to be a unique equation. It's just going to be one equation that's based on this point and this vector. We could choose a different point. We could choose a different vector. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our normal vector n, which is that 4, 2, negative 5. It's going to be dotted with r minus r naught. So r again is x, y, z. So it'll be x, y, z minus our point. So x minus 3, comma, y plus 1, comma, z minus 7 equals 0. So this is the vector equation of a plane. You can leave it like that. Other way you might express this is 4 times x minus 3 plus 2 times y plus 1 minus 5 times z minus 7 equals 0. That will be the scale, scalar equation of the plane. So if I don't ask you for a specific set, either of those are okay. And then like I said, the last way that people do it is they multiply out the 4, 2, and negative 5. If you did that, you would get 4x plus 2y minus 5z. We have negative 12 and 2, so negative 10, positive 35, so that will give us positive 25. So all three of those are okay. This form is called the linear equation of a plane. If you're asked for a linear equation, it's that one. Now, if you are asked to graph a plane, the linear equation is most helpful. So if I gave you this equation, how would you go about graphing the equation of the plane? What information does that equation give you? Yes. You're going to find the three different intercepts. So plug in x and y are 0, find the z-intercept. Plug in x and z are 0, find the y-intercept, etc. Can you guys picture that without us actually doing it? OK. Sorry, I know that our notes are long today. Next example. We are going to find an equation of the plane that passes through the following three points. P is 1, 3, 2. Q is 3, negative 1, 6. And R is 5, 2, 0. So as we talked about a few minutes ago, we need a point and we need a normal vector. We have three points to choose from. How are we going to find a normal vector? So we have a plane with these three points. How can I use those three points to find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane? So we're going to find two vectors. I'm going to do Max's suggestion and find PQ and PR. Then when I take their cross product, I'll end up with a vector that's perpendicular to both. PQ, if I do 3 minus 1, I get 2. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And 6 minus 2 is 4. And then PR, 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. I cross them, this is where I'm going to have to do my determinants, my i, j, k. Is it okay if I don't show all the work, if we just? Okay, great. So i's we're going to ignore. We get negative 8, subtract 4. Like that, right? Okay. So we get 8, add 4 is going to give us 12. For the j's, we get negative 4, subtract 16, negative 20, but you have to flip the sign, which is positive 20. 
negative 2 adds 16 will give us 14. Okay, you can definitely use this as n if you want to. Any scalar multiple is still going to be perpendicular to the plane. So I normally simplify if I can. So I divided by 2 and got 6, 10, 7. So then our equation is going to be 6. Use any of the points. It doesn't matter. I used point P. So 6 times x minus 1 plus 10 multiplied by y minus 3 plus 7 times z minus 2 equals 0. That form is okay. If you choose to multiply everything out, you get 6x, add 10y, add 7z equals 50. That's another possible form for you to leave it in. Okay, questions about equations of planes? Okay. We are not going to be able to get through the next example. So tomorrow we have three more pages of notes. I think we got through enough today that it's not going to take us the entire period tomorrow. So you should hopefully have time at the end of the period 